Good morning. Good morning. We are reminded that uh, we mask when we mingle. So since I'm this far away from you, I'm going to take mine off and you'll be able to see me and hear me better. Well, give me a minute. <laughs> I am Jean Sanders, and uh, I am not Reverend R.L. Bethley. You might have noticed. Uh, she is on vacation. She and her husband, Rusty, are uh, celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary with uh, a week away. And so uh, she's out this morning. We'll be back soon in the next couple of days. But um, I am Jean Sanders. I'm a retired pastor and have been attending here for... Uh, since I retired a year and a half or so ago, and uh, love this church, and so I was excited. I'm excited to have the opportunity to bring God's word to you today. There is a danger in asking a retired pastor who hasn't preached in a while. <laughs> uh, I, that's just a that's just a warning. But we're here. But I actually I'm I'm a Saints fan, and they they, you know, there is a game today. So, <laughs> did we tape it though, Chris? Is it? Oh, we're good. We're good. We can settle in. Y'all can all come to my house after, I guess. But welcome to worship. We are here to worship God. Uh, to every worship service on the Sabbath day is a celebration that we are God's people, that God loves us. And so as we come to celebrate that today, settle back and be ready to participate because uh, that's what we do when we come to worship um, there are a few things, yes, uh, use your own judgment with masking when you're not mingling and you're just sitting in your social distance. If you're com more comfortable taking it off, that's up to you. Um, a theme for the day is, is, uh, healing and wholeness. Um, it, we're going to have a healing story from the Bible, one of the episodes in the life of Jesus. And so uh, you'll, we'll have that later in the service and a message on it. Uh, I'm continuing uh, the sermon series about the red letter questions. And uh, Reverend R.L. let me pick my own question. I, she just gave me the list of hers and I couldn't pick one of hers. Uh, so anyway, I picked this one because it just, it's just a question that, that jumps out at me. Do you want to be well? And so our theme, if we had one today, is about healing. And I want you to think even beyond healing of COVID or healing of any sickness, physical sickness, but also emotional and spiritual sickness. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Growing up, I didn't know what Methodists believed about healing because I don't remember them talking about it much in the Methodist church I grew up in. Uh, but on TV, I saw a faith healer, and I loved to watch her when, it came, when she came on. Her name was Catherine Kuhlman. Has anybody, does anybody remember Catherine Kuhlman? Y'all might not be old enough. But you'll remember this if you ever heard her. She started her program on TV with these, like this. It sounded like this. I'll do my best to sound like her. Have you been waiting for me? It gave me chills every time I heard it, but she got my attention, you know. So, bar that, how do, what do we believe about healing? And she definitely was a faith healer. And, uh, but anyway, and the other thing I remember, I don't remember her sermons, but I do remember uh, she would say, and now, Dino on the piano. So, we have Elizabeth. So, if I get dramatic about that, it's because I'm still thinking of Catherine Kuhlman. But that's what we're going to be looking at. What do we believe about healing and, and in this broader sense of be, God making us and continuing to heal us and uh, make us well, make us whole, make us into the people that he created us to be. So uh, that's kind of our theme for the day. Would you pray for our invocation? Would you bow your head to pray? Touch us, tender God, with the holiness of this morning. Let your fragrant oil of blessing and healing pour over us and be felt as inward peace and a divine call. Bring forth in us confidence to speak your word, 
awareness to recognize your blessing, and courage to build your kingdom of peace and love. Lay your hands upon us and strengthen us to do your will and sing your praises. Amen. And now would you stand for the call to worship? It's printed in your bulletin. And we will, uh, I'll be the leader and you be the people. Why are you here? The struggle is real. Life is hard. But why are you here? We come seeking healing and hope. Yes. But why are you here? We come to abide in God's grace and mercy. We We want want to be be made well. well. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in singing our hymn of praise, Oh How I Love Jesus, number 170 in your United Methodist hymnal. Remain standing as we affirm our faith with the words printed again in the bulletin. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, great indeed, great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. I invite Caitlin Hillard, our Hillard, our um, children's minister, and youth, and what else? Everything, families, youth and children's director. Okay, yeah. youth and children, and all hey the guys. children know to come on up. Come Here on down. Come. Hello. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh look, Natalie and Gabe are coming. Good morning. Good. Whoa. 
I love the enthusiasm. Natalie said, Gabe, you're going to come learn about Jesus this morning. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hello. So we're going to share with the church a little bit this morning what we've been learning in Kids Church on Wednesday nights and Sundays. So we've been going through the Ten Commandments on Wednesday nights. And one of the commandments that we talked about, not this past week, but the week before that, was loving our families. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll refresh your memory. So when we were talking about loving our families, why do we think it's important for us to love our families? Any ideas? Why do we think? You don't know? It must have been some rough weeks in the house this week, huh, guys? <laughs> so we are supposed to love our families because those are the people that God has given us to help us grow and learn and help us in whatever we need in life. And those are the people that are always there, no matter what, right? Whether we like it or not sometimes, I guess. <laughs> so what do you think it means when it means to love your family always? Does that mean that you have to like them all the time and love every single thing that they do? Gabe shaking his head like this. Anybody else? Do you think you have to like everything your family does? Yes, Natalie. Oh, okay, just tell me, just tell me, just tell me. Oh, I scared her away. Well, we don't have to like everything our family does. I know when I was growing up, I had a brother who loved to have, he had these big, Hulk hand things that he would put on his hands, right? And he would just, wah, 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 wah. and he just loved to hit on all of us other siblings and just would hit all the things and break things. And it made me so mad. But one day he had some friends over and one of his friends got those Hulk hands on and just hit him. And then I got really mad because while I could hit my brother back, nobody else was allowed to. I was pretty mad about that. So sometimes our siblings make us really mad, right? Yeah, Gabe's like, yes. Sometimes our siblings make us really, really mad. But we always love them because your family is the people that you can just annoy them and all, oh, you just get so frustrated with them. But at the end of the day, your family are the ones that are there for you and love you and want the best for you, even whenever you just get really angry with them sometimes, right? So let's go learn a little bit more about that in Kids Church, okay? So let's move this way, and we will be back in a little while, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> Let us continue with this spirit of prayer that we're in. Lord, help us to recognize that you hold us. You hold us in the palm of your hand. You are the father of all and a great healer of the mind and the body and our attitude. And so we ask that you heal our broken hearts, Lord. Heal our spirits. Heal our relationships and heal our relationship with you so that we can do your work on earth. We ask that you do all these things in the name of Jesus, your son. In Jesus' name we pray and sing this morning. Amen. Our prayer song can be found in your black The Faith We Sing books, number 2213 healer of our every ill. We will be singing verses one and three.
And, and I invite you to turn, don't put them up, turn to number, uh, this isn't in your bulletin, your bulletin, but turn to 2201, 2201 for our prayers of the people. 2201, um, and it's called Prayers of the People. So the choir is going to help us with this because it's going to be, um, there's going to be some singing involved. And so uh, it's a beautiful way to, to pray and intersperse it with music. So, uh, but I just want to let you know that uh, when I call out, the leader's going to call out a prayer prompt, I would call it. The first one is, number one, together let us pray for the people of this gathering. Then anyone in the congregation can call out a prayer request, uh, a name that you want prayed over, a, or a spoken intercession or petition in that category. And then we'll go to the next one. And the same thing, call out your prayers. After each of the categories, when you've had time to pray silently or, and to call out whatever you want to call out, each one will end with the, the, the response at the bottom, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, and we'll sing it. Uh, Elizabeth will say, will sing in your mercy, and the choir will lead us in singing, Hear Our Prayer. Lord, let your kingdom come. Together, let us pray for the people of this gathering. We want to pray for Colleen Brooks' dad. He's been in the hospital this week, and, and it's a praise because he's home and doing better. We want to pray for Kirsten Williamson. She's one of the FUMP teachers and very ill in the hospital. Another one that was given to me is Cohen. Cohen Doyle has been waiting for a heart transplant. He's a sophomore at Ash, and this morning he is getting his transplant. So we want to lift him in prayer. And another one given to me this morning is that Monette Risher fell last night and broke her hip, and she'll have surgery this afternoon in Baton Rouge General. So pray for Monette. Are there others? Together, let us pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Together, let us pray for the concerns of this local community. We pray for children who, one, for one reason or another, uh, have to be removed from their natural parents and put into foster care. We lift up those caught in addiction.
together, let us pray for the world, its people, and its leaders. Together, let us pray for the church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, we... We lift up our own bishop in Louisiana, Bishop Cynthia Harvey, our district superintendent in the Alexandria District, Reverend Carly Pigeon, and our own pastor here, Dr. Reverend R.L. Bethley. Together, let us pray for the communion of saints. We thank you, God, for all those who have gone before us that in your mystery are still with us. We thank you for that communion of saints. we pray as Jesus taught his disciples our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is um, taken from the Gospel of John in chapter 5, verses 1 through 18. I could have just read our, our question and the brief story, but I wanted to give you a little more for the context. After this... There was a Jewish festival, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate in the north city wall, is a pool with the Aramaic name of Bethsaida. It had five covered porches. And a crowd of people who were sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed sat there. A certain man was there who had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, knowing that he had already been there a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I do not have anyone who can put me in the water when it is stirred up. When I'm trying to get in, someone else has gotten in ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man was well, and he picked up his mat, and he walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. 
the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It's the Sabbath. You aren't allowed to carry your mat. He answered, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. They inquired, Who is this man who said this to you? Pick it up and walk. The man who had been cured didn't know who it was because Jesus had slipped away from the crowd gathered there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said, See, you have been made well. Don't sin anymore in case something worse happens to you. The man went and proclaimed to the Jewish leaders that Jesus was the man who had made him well. As a result, the Jewish leaders were harassing Jesus since he had done these things on the Sabbath. Jesus replied, My father is still working, and I am working too. For this reason, the Jewish leaders wanted even more to kill him, not only because he was doing away with the Sabbath, but also because he called God his own father, thereby making himself equal with God. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Well, here's this familiar story, this episode in the life of Jesus. And it tells us something about healing, but it has some surprises to it. Um, The title of, of the message is the question of the day is, do you want to get well? But it could have been called, uh, no good deed goes unpunished. Because if you read the whole story, Jesus was punished for this miracle. This early in the Gospel of John, they're already plotting to kill him because of what he does on the Sabbath and his understanding of the Sabbath. Wednesday night at the Bible study, we talked about the Sabbath. We were doing the Ten Commandments like the children are. And it was, uh, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And so um, interesting that this question comes up in this so early in, in, in the ministry of Jesus. But here he is. And it's interesting that in so many stories in the Bible of Jesus healing people, it hinges on the faith of the sick person. But here in the fifth chapter of John, we have a man who didn't seem to know who Jesus was and therefore didn't have faith in Jesus. He didn't even ask to be healed. Uh, Jesus saw many people around there that were sick and invalids, but he came to this man, this particular man that day, sitting at the pool. Now, When I read through this, I see some irony about the pool of Bethsaida. Um, It talks about people that are lame and paralyzed and people that are blind that are there. Well, it occurs to me that the blind people couldn't see when the water was troubled to get up and and be the first person in. Because, see, there was a, um, a tradition, a legend that... Uh, this pool, this is a fact that I know, for, that I've learned, is that it, it had, was fed by a spring, so sometimes the waters rippled. But the legend was that the, occasionally the angels rippled the water. They, they troubled the water. And when it, the waters were troubled, the first person in would be healed. But the irony, to, in my way of thinking, the, the blind men had a little bit of a disadvantage because they couldn't see when it was. Maybe somebody would tell them, but they weren't even watching it. I mean, they, they couldn't see it. So, and then the, the lame and paralyzed people could see it, but they couldn't get there first. You know, they couldn't get there. Um, so there's that irony. And it, it occurs to me uh, that that's a little example of how, you know, this pool of Bethsaida and this beautiful legend... Um, means that not everybody, I wonder if anybody got healed, you know? Uh, maybe, the, maybe the blind, if the lame people told them anyway, you know what I'm saying? It's not an equal opportunity uh, type of thing. And not, I wonder how many people really got healed there. But the thing about God is we all can be healed. We can all be made whole. We, God is available to all of us, no matter 
if our diseases or infirmities show or if they don't or if we keep them well hidden God sees so we have Jesus at this thing without this man was healed but it didn't show any uh, evidence of his faith and he didn't call out to Jesus uh, he didn't, as others have done in the Bible, he didn't climb up a sycamore tree to see Jesus as, as uh, Zacchaeus did. He didn't reach out to touch the hem of his garment like the woman with, that was healed of the hemorrhage. Uh, he didn't do anything. He didn't even ask to be healed. He did not know Jesus or that Jesus could help him anyway. He just saw Jesus and his, and his disciples coming up to him. Uh, but Jesus saw him, and Jesus knew him. It says he knew that, that uh, Jesus knew that the man had been sitting there for 38 years. That's longer than the average lifespan So in those days. It's longer than Jesus lived on earth before he was crucified. So, you know, that's quite a fact that they give us, these 38 years. But Jesus knew he had been there a long time. He saw him, he knew him, and he spoke to him. We never hear the man's name. All we know is that he is, our, the CEB version, the Co Common English Bible says not, he was not well, he was sick. Some versions say he was lame. Uh, but regardless, he'd been sitting there a long time. I'm sure he was hoping for a cure, or had he lost hope by now? 38 years. Um, but anyway, that day, at that time, the waters weren't stirring. But Jesus, Jesus' heart was stirring for this man on this particular Sabbath day. And he asked the man our red-letter question of the day. He says, would you like to get well? Now, does that hit anybody as a strange question? You know, it's like saying at Thanksgiving dinner with the table People have spent all, all week and definitely all morning cooking and, and the table is groaning with all the dishes and all the food and everybody's hungry and everybody finally gets to the table and if the matriarch or the patriarch were to ask the question, does anybody want to eat? That would be a funny question, right? That's not what you, how you usually, you know the answer. Of course, of course. Uh, so... You know, you can think of a lot of scenarios like that where that, you know, that's the obvious question. Why ask that question? Um, when we have a potluck dinner at church and everybody's lined up and that table is, do we say, does anybody want to eat? You know, of course. Of course. If they get to that, that, that window on Wednesday morning, we, we know they want to eat. Right, Mark? They're there. Um, so how would you answer that question if you'd been there for 38 years? How would you answer that question? Do you want to be well? The man answers, and he answers as a victim, doesn't he? He tells Jesus why it's impossible for him to get well. I can never be the first person in the water with the, you know, I can't get there. I can't move fast enough. Someone always gets in before me when the waters stir. And, and, you know, in my mind, and, and I can almost hear a whine in his voice by the end. He says, someone always gets in before me. Well, there he is having a pity party. Now, how many of us have had a pity party at some time in our lives? I have. But a pity party with Jesus? Do you have a pity party with Jesus? That's what he did. And Jesus didn't rebuke him for it, so maybe, maybe that's a good, maybe it's okay to have a pity party with Jesus. Maybe he understood. I don't know. But Jesus saw him. I know that. He knew him, and he spoke to him. Maybe the man wasn't whining at all. Maybe Jesus was happy with his response because he wanted the man to admit that he needed someone else. He needed help. He couldn't heal himself, and he needed help. Pride can get in the way of healing and wholeness. 
It can block it just as much as lack of faith. Have we ever been too full of pride to admit our need of help? We want to be the ones that are helping, not the one in need of help. Instead of rebuking the man for this answer, it seems to have opened the door for healing that day. So he answers him, and he doesn't give him any promises. He gives him three commands, but he doesn't give him any promises of what's going to happen. He just says, do you remember? Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And guess what? The man went from pity to action, obedient action. Wow, would we be that obedient? With God speaks to us. Get up and get going. He didn't ask any questions. He didn't even ask Jesus' name. He simply stood, picked up his mat, and walked, and walked away. So, the questions today that come from this one question. What aspects of your life are you so comfortable with that you would rather Jesus not disturb you? I've been this way all my life. I can't change. Do we ever feel that way about something that's just... We know we need to change. We know we want to change some aspect of our lives to be more whole, more full of joy and peace and love and patience, all of the above. But we feel like we can't change. And we, don't, we, we, we might whine. Sometimes we have a pity party. We are aware of our needs but too full of pride maybe to admit them. What would have being healed have meant to that man? Maybe more responsibility? You know, that little, um, that little version, that little uh, verse about to whom much is given, much is expected. It, it kind of makes us... Ugh. There's a wonderful cartoon. It's a Peanuts cartoon. Um, and it has just two characters in it, Lucy and Linus. And no surprise, Lucy's doing all the talking, and Linus is doing the listening. He doesn't say a word in this cartoon, but he's there with his little, you know, curly face. And anyway, Lucy is talking, and she says to Linus, I was praying for greater patience and understanding, but I quit. Linus just looks at her. He doesn't ask why. He knows he'll hear it, you know, he'll, she'll continue, and she does. He said, she says, I was afraid I would get it. In what aspects of our lives are we so comfortable that you would rather Jesus not disturb us? I invite you this morning to listen for the Spirit's prompting. Listen to Jesus calling. Come to me and be healed. The offer of healing may lead you to far off places. Or it may lead you to an AA meeting. Jesus' call may lead you to volunteer to, at a homeless shelter across town or to reconcile with your parents or um, a, a family member in the next room. But until you ask, until you risk immersion in the healing waters, you will not know the full joy that God promises. Jesus is asking you and me this morning, do you want to get well? Let us pray. O oh, great physician, there is pain in us, Lord, and sickness. It comes in many forms, but the anguish is the same. Some of us are battling disease and injury. Perhaps not even our closest friends know how really serious it is. But you know, Lord. Some of us live with pain as an ever-present companion. We want you to take the hurt away. But if it must be, give us the stamina and grace to bear it with patience and the power to keep from taking it out on those around us. Some of us outwardly are a picture of health. 
But inside our heart of hearts, where you alone walk freely, something is wrong. Something that sickens joy and love. Perhaps it stems for a very, from a very old tragedy. Perhaps it is a recent heartbreak. Perhaps it is conflict in our family. Perhaps it is loneliness. Perhaps it is doubt. Touch us, Lord. Heal our memories. Free us from what is past. Other, others of us are doing our best with the pain of a loved one as an illness or a heartbreak ravages one we hold dear. Often there is very little we can do directly, even though we might gladly change places with that person if we could. Be near to those we name before you in our hearts. Relieve the loneliness of their struggle. Battle their pain. Lift their spirits. Restore their joy. We pray for the sickness that stalks our world in many, many places where poverty dulls the eyes and cripples the mind, where hope and safety are luxuries only the rich can sample, where there is violence. Use us as instruments of your healing in the world around us. Motivate us to become alert and informed. Do not let us hide our hearts and minds from that which is too terrible for us to bear. Free us to do our part, knowing that you can and do bear the burden of our world. We pray in gratitude for your compassion and your healing touch, Lord. And we pray in the strong and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's time for announcements. So, I'm going to come down, get a little closer, and let's go over some of these announcements together. One is that we, we are continuing having our Wednesday night gathering Come for a wonderful meal at 5 o'clock and then say about 6. We break off into groups. There's a group for you because there's a group for every age and uh, some just really, really nice groups. Our choir meets, our bell choir, and uh, so there's, there's an opportunity for everybody. So come on Wednesday nights, and then there's going to be, um, and I will say, um, I'm leading on Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock our prayer group and it'll be right there in the chapel so if you're available come on Tuesday morning at nine o'clock um, it's a short but sweet time of prayer um, I want we want you to save the date for trunk or treat we're going to do it on Halloween afternoon October 31st which is a Sunday from three to four and we need trunks and candy so there's a place I think to volunteer in the back or uh, make sure we want people to, we want to know how many are coming because we want a bunch, right? If somebody needs to say something about this, okay, we'll go on, but just keep that in mind. Um, Mark is, Atwood is going to come with an announcement um, for us. We had a very successful mission trip down to Thibodeau because a lot of people were involved. I'm asking for a lot of people to be involved in this as well. We will be doing the live nativity again this year, and we need lots of people involved in order to have a successful outreach to our community. Uh, if you've been involved before, you know uh, how important it is, how well received it is in our community. I have some flyers on the back table, but basically the 5th of December is when we're going to do live nativity this year. We do need everybody to volunteer. I have a sign up at the bottom of the, the pamphlet where it says, uh, I participated before as a whatever and I enjoyed doing it, so I want to do that again. There's also a slot that says, uh, I may not have been there last time you did it, but I want to be in the cast or I want to be in the support group 
We have two different positions. Basically, you can either be a cast member out in the drive-through, or you can be part of the support staff that fixes the meals for the people and gets the, the uh, uh, all the costumes ready and all of that. Uh, but we do need you to sign up as soon as possible. We're only two months away. Like I said, it's December 5th, so it is right around the corner. So please uh, fill out that slip and either get it back to me or get it to the office, and we'll get you all slotted in. We're getting everything prepared. Uh, Live Nativity, like I said, is a great outreach to this community, and it's a great way to start the Christmas holidays in uh, the right spirit, in the fact that Christ sent his son to this earth to uh, save our, save us and, and it's an important thing as opposed to the um, normal things people think of as Christmas, the trees and presents and that type of thing. So we want to get a lot of attendance and we want a good live nativity uh, activity this year. So please be involved. Thank you, Mark. Won't that be fun? I can't wait. Uh, another announcement is that um, is we're going to have a workshop tomorrow night here at the church, and again, the net following Monday night, that's October 11th and 18th, there's a flyer in the back about it. It's how, the theme is how to help a panhandler without giving them money. Um, students from LC School of Social Work will be here to lead that. It's part of their class assignment, so come and help them, and I think it's going to be a really timely topic of how we can be of help. So come and help. Come and help. Um, attend one or the other of those. And finally, before we sing our last hymn, um, if, any, if you are ready to become a part of this great church, come down during the singing of this hymn or call the pastor during the week. Okay. Our closing hymn can be found in your hymnals, number 362, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Let's stand and sing together. Jesus.
I thank you again for being in worship today, for joining us here in the sanctuary, and those of you uh, joining us through Facebook. Um, come back. Ariel will be back. So, um, but I ask you to receive this benediction, this blessing. And so sometimes when we were ready to receive something, we put our hands out. So I invite you to do that. Put your hands out in front of you to receive this blessing as a symbol of being open for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Shalom to you now. Shalom, my friends. May God's full mercies bless you. Be all.